Today we're going to visit a giant chemistry lab. Shall we check it out? See this greenish pool? This is just water with salt, but it's going to turn into chlorine, caustic soda, bleach, and even raw material to make plastic. We came all the way to Santo Andre in the metropolitan region of Sao Paulo to visit one of Unipar's three factories. The cool thing here is that we'll get to see chemical reactions that we're used to seeing at school or on Manuel do Mundo being used on an industrial scale. Unipar has just completed 55 years of operation. And even though you probably never bought anything directly from them, I'm sure you've already used something that depends on what was produced here. They supply raw materials for the food, textile, paper, beverage, pharmaceutical, construction, and even water treatment industries. And all of this starts by mixing salt with water. Look at this mountain of salt. This is industrial salt. The main difference from the salt we use at home is that there it's iodized salt. The salt molecule is sodium chloride, NaCl. There's one chlorine atom and one sodium atom. The salt we use at home has iodine added, but here it would just get in the way. Here the salt will be mixed with water, which is H2O, two hydrogens and one oxygen. And these four elements are the basis of everything that's made here in this industry. Various processes separate atoms, recombine them and generate new molecules. This initial blend, known as brine, is water with a high salt concentration. Just so you have an idea, in the sea the average is about 35 grams of salt per liter of water. Here it can reach 315 grams, which is about how much salt there is in the Dead Sea. Yes, that's the sea where, because it's so salty, people don't sink. But along with that mountain of salt we saw, there are some impurities, mainly calcium and magnesium. Due to this, the brine will undergo two purification processes, one being a physical chemical treatment. First, it takes the impurities and turns them into larger particles, which are carbonates and hydroxides. As they become heavier, they settle to the bottom through decantation and are then removed. In the end, the brine is checked to ensure it only contains water and salt. Now, the process starts with electrolysis, which is nothing more than using electric energy to force a chemical reaction, which we can see here represented in this model. The brine is placed between a positive pole, anode, and a negative pole, cathode, to allow electric energy to pass through the liquid, which in the model were two bags with liquid. Here, it's this gigantic structure. Each of these modules holds 40,000 liters of brine. Just so you have an idea, the electric current is 16,000 amperes. That's why we can't record with our regular camera. The magnetic field is very strong, so I'm using my phone. All this electric energy will make the atoms separate and then come together, forming other things. Three new substances come out of the electrolyzer. Chlorine and hydrogen in gas form, which will be used here to make other things. And caustic soda, which will be sold to industry. And there's still some diluted brine left, which will be concentrated and sent back here. To separate the caustic soda, here in Santo Andre, they use a super modern method. There's a membrane in the middle that only lets sodium pass to one side. Here, hydrogen gas is coming out. Water has two hydrogen atoms, but only one of them will come out here. Then it joins with another atom that came from another water molecule forming H2 gas. This is what's called green hydrogen when it's made from water using electricity from renewable sources. It could even fuel a car and might become commonplace in the future. And here at Unipar, they will use it later on to supply some boilers. The oxygen and hydrogen left over from the water will combine with the sodium, forming sodium hydroxide or caustic soda. It comes out of the electrolyzer and goes through an evaporation process to become more concentrated. Caustic soda used at home for unclogging drains is widely used in the paper industry to make paper white. But it's also used to make soap, detergent, and it's even part of the aluminum production process. And the third product that comes out of here is chlorine. Leftover salt atoms combine to form chlorine gas, Cl2. But hold on, it's not chlorine gas that comes out of the factory here. It's still going to be processed to become three other products. By the way, when we talk about chlorine, you might be thinking of that product used in swimming pools. That's not exactly chlorine, it's sodium hypochlorite, which is actually the first of the three products made here with chlorine. We also call sodium hypochlorite bleach. It's the same thing, just at a lower concentration. And it's great for killing bacteria. 
It's a mix of caustic soda and chlorine, separated earlier during electrolysis. And they're going to meet again in this reactor where a chemical reaction happens that produces hypochlorite. It comes out of here at a concentration higher than 12.5%. Just so you have an idea, in bleach the concentration is 2.5%. And there's a little bit in the water we drink too, but the concentration there is very low, less than 0.5%. The second product you have in your stomach, which is hydrochloric acid. The chlorine gas enters this furnace, where it will meet the hydrogen also generated in the electrolysis process. The two together will react, burning and forming a gas that is hydrogen chloride, which is then mixed with water to form hydrochloric acid. This acid is used for a lot of things, for drilling oil wells in the food industry, in the steel industry, to remove rust from metals. It helps in the production of biodiesel, in water treatment, and in our stomach, it helps with digestion. But in this case, it's our own body that produces it. The chlorine gas also goes to a part of this factory that makes something I bet you didn't know is produced with salt and water. Plastic. But then we have to add one more ingredient to this recipe, which is carbon. It arrives here in the form of a gas called ethylene, which is a molecule basically made up of carbon and hydrogen. First, ethylene and chlorine will mix in a reactor here, forming a product called dichloroethane. I can't get close because it's a classified area. Behind me, a heat decomposition process called pyrolysis will occur in a hazardous area inaccessible to our cameras. It will form vinyl chloride monomer, which is used to make polyvinyl chloride. In other words, the famous polyvinyl chloride, the one from polyvinyl chloride pipes. It's the process of turning monomers into polymers. In other words, for a tiny molecule to join together many times and form a big molecule. It will go through a polymerization reactor, which is what's behind me. The monomer arrives in the form of a liquefied gas, which is mixed with hot water. And from there, we have a polymerization reaction that forms a much larger molecule. The reaction time and process can yield a different, slightly more malleable plastic, a bit more rigid. What comes out of the reactor is a kind of sludge, water mixed with polyvinyl chloride powder, which needs to go through these giant centrifuges to dry. The plastic will still go through a dryer. And we're going to take a little bit from the machine so we can see the final product up close, which is this right here. It's this white powder that will be transformed into polyvinyl chloride pipes and a series of other plastics that we use in toys, packaging, vehicles, hospital products, and much more. Everything that is produced is stored in bags if it's a dry product. And if it's a liquid product, it's kept in tanks like this and distributed in trucks all over the world. So today you saw how it's possible to use just water, salt and a pinch of carbon to make five different products. Chlorine gas, hydrochloric acid, sodium hypochlorite, caustic soda and polyvinyl chloride. And all of this is made here at Unipar, which is a leader in the production of chlorine and caustic soda, and the second largest producer of polyvinyl chloride in South America. Chemical industry is essential for producing materials used in everyday products, enabling other industries to function.